Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so I'm just going to reference my notes here just to make sure that we don't miss anything. So there's some programs that I think are front facing that everyone's um, probably aware of. Uh, like there is a handmade category on Amazon and there is a, a custom category on Amazon. And then there's even a subscription box category on Amazon. So, mm -hmm. I mean, let me just give a quick rundown of those in case any of the listeners don't know what those are. So everything that you sell on Etsy all these things that are getting customized and like you're know, putting logos and all that kind of stuff. And then the stuff that you just like, like a, a art or a design or whatever it is that you're just, you know, putting together, and you're just claiming that it's handmade. You can actually get approved to be in either of those categories, Amazon customs or Amazon handmade. When you're in either of those categories, what's really, really great is that Amazon literally will market for all of your ASINs for free. Most people will get uh, on average a 6.5 to 11.5% free retargeting ad spend within Amazon's platform. So let's say you're searching for, you know, it's football season's coming up, right? We're almost in September. Let's say you're searching for your favorite football teams like t-shirt or other paraphernalia that's out there that, you know, is swag for going to a game or your Sunday cookouts or anything like that. If, if you make custom shirts for your team or anything like that, you can actually go onto Amazon Handmade or if you customize these shirts with like names and numbers and all that kind of stuff, you can go and custom. And then literally, as soon as you make your first sale, Amazon will reinvest into making sure other people realize that you're a vendor that'll actually deliver on whatever that you're doing. And this is something that came down from top, top, top level management over at Amazon, where they really wanted to push these specific categories to, to kind of compete with the other players. I mean, everyone knows how Amazon started, right? With the diapers and, and the books and everything else. And they just wanted to eliminate that competition. And I mean, it's pretty obvious who, who Amazon's going after with these two categories, but Amazon's the big player. And if you're looking for custom stuff and you're able to get it in two to five days turnaround, you meet all of Amazon's requirements to be in these categories. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting... Um subject because i've i've had a few clients in this first thing that people have to be aware of is if you are doing amazon custom that is an fbm operation so you have to be fulfilling your own orders because right. orders are coming in for you to produce the customization and then ship it to the customer so that's number one, right? Now, now that's not 100% um, all in. There's also an FBA version where um, Amazon will actually print the order for you, depending on what category it is. So they're doing it for shirts, they're doing it for posters, they're doing it for mugs, pens, some of the basic items. If you're familiar with going on websites like for print and like um, Spreadshirt and all that kind of stuff. It's very similar what Amazon will reprint for you. And then Amazon will handle everything. Really? All you're doing they, they actually do the production. You send them yeah. the, the plain materials. And then, of course, they are receiving the specs when the order is placed. And then they do the printing. So I'm sure they charge for it, right? Yeah, of course, of course. But it's Amazon, so it's still a great price, right? Just like how, at, you know, when, if you do fulfill by Prime shipment for your like Shopify website or anything like that, which I you know we'll get, we'll talk about that if we have time. Uh, it's still a phenomenal rate for what they're offering. I, I think like a one color print on a t-shirt, all inclusive with shirt and print and shipping is around eight to $9 is the cost that Amazon takes. Eight to nine dollars. Right. And so if you're selling that shirt for twenty dollars, I mean that's great margin, right? And I mean, it's not bad. It's just at the end of the day, are people coming to Amazon to search for a custom Giants, you know, NFL Giants t-shirt? Are they going to Etsy? Are they going to the NFL store? I mean, there's a lot of competition in some of those spaces. But yeah. if you can make a unique product that has an edge and, and it's easy to find through Amazon search algorithm, then, I mean, you definitely have an opportunity to scale and grow. Plus, if Amazon is marketing your listings because they are custom, that's a, that's a big advantage. You know, Ankur, what appeals to me about what you just mentioned, where Amazon does the customization for you, is that it will scale. You can never scale on your own, right? I mean, right. <laughs> imagine... So I always, I, I wrote blog articles about this. I talk about this all the time. First of all, driving business to your own website versus Amazon. 
is an expensive game. So I say, don't think about it if that's the first thing you need to do. Launch on Amazon and so that you can get customers rather than spend money on visitors. The second challenge is after getting enough visitors and getting enough conversion is, God forbid, you are extremely successful. You're getting hundreds of orders a day. Fulfilling those orders, dealing with customer service, and, and it, it's, it's a nightmare for a startup, right? Uh, it, it never scales. So that's why I always say, go with Amazon. Now, with what you mentioned, you open a whole new door, so to speak, with custom products uh, where you don't have to deal with the customization part, but let Amazon do it. And plus, they will market it for you. Uh, this is a great service. I did have a client uh, who had an interesting product. They did personalized storybooks for kids. And they would print. So one thing we did was we basically picked five boys, five girls' names that are most popular. Uh, in the United States and pre-printed those and sent them off as FBA. So they were already there, shipped from stock. And then they also had a custom variation that simply would become an FBM uh, of uh, order, so to speak. And then we would watch, you know, how many orders are coming in for what name? And then we will very quickly add that to the pre-configured ones. And that way, you know, keep making them, turning them into FBA. So that's a strategy that we pursued on. It was a unique item. Uh, it, it, nevertheless, there, is, there was still some work, but that's another way to do it.